The multi-state bitmap is great for showing the various stages of a process graphically instead of with text messages. The PLC just updates a tag to select the image it wants to display. In this example, this increment decrement button is changing this image index tag. Normally the PLC would do that, of course. And I'm showing the index here just so we can keep an eye on it. As you can see, we get a different image for each time the tag is changed. We go from one conveyor to three conveyors to chop mode. Now we're boxing. Uh, maybe you have a cooling mode. Maybe there's some kind of issue on the line and you want to bring the line to a full stop. The beauty of this is you can use any graphics you want and you can have up to 17 images per object. This is a really great way to show the user what's going on. The multi-state bitmap is watching a tag down on the PLC. When the PLC changes that tag value, the multi-state bitmap displays the corresponding image. If you're feeling creative, you can even use this to generate simple animations. Here's an example of a banner flying across the screen. The PLC would simply increment a tag and wrap it back to zero to repeat the animation loop. I have F1 set up to increment this tag and F2 set up to reset it. So as I increment the tag, you can see the tag incrementing here, each image appears on the screen every time I press F1. When I get to the end of the images, there's 16 images in this loop, I simply hit F2 to reset the index and then repeat the cycle. Normally the PLC would do all of this, of course. Let's do an example so we can see how this works. Double click or drag the multi-state bitmap onto the screen. It's important to understand that you have a choice. You can sequence the images by either shifting a 1 through a 16-bit shift register or by incrementing a tag and referencing the images by image number. It's really personal preference and really depends on how you set things up in your PLC. You just need to be sure to pick one before you start loading images. Once you start loading your images, you can't change it back. We'll index our images by image number in this project, and we'll use this image index tag that we already have set up. Now when we go to the image tab, we just fill up this table with the images we want to use. We'll grab a few random ones for this example, so let's add a new image, and let's add the alarm clock, we'll add another one, how about the conveyor belt, add another one, the three belts, and how about one more? Oh, the chop blade. So these are the images we're going to sequence through with the tag we set up in the previous tab. Note that we can do all the usual stuff for each image. You can lock the aspect ratio, stretch to fit, change the background color, and even set the alignment. Also note the counter up here in the upper right. It tells us we've used four of the 17 available images. These arrows move the image. For example, suppose I want this blade image to occur in this slot. Well, you select that image and move it up to the second slot. If you want to sequence through the images, use the mini simulator. So since we move the blade up to the second position, we expect to see the alarm clock, then the blade, then the one and the three conveyors. Let's take a look. We increment our simulator to zero, one is the blade, Two is a single conveyor, three is a triple conveyor. Notice that that also shows up on the screen. So this sequences you through the image. This moves the image. So be careful you don't use this to sequence things. It'll mess up your list. Let's go back to the general tab. Everything looks good here. So we say OK, simulate, save the project. This multi-state bitmap is monitoring this tag. As this tag changes, the bitmap reflects that. So now the PLC is in control over which image gets displayed on the screen. Look what happens if the tag value exceeds the number of images we have in our table. Let's go to a 5, for example. Now we get an error message. We can change that. Let's go back to the dialog. In this box right here, we can choose how error messages are handled. Right now we have it set to display an error message, but we could have it display a blank image or simply display the previous displayed bitmap. Let's just have it display a blank for now. We'll say OK, simulate that, save the project, up pops our simulator, and now if we go to image 3, which exists, we're fine. 
If we go to image 7, which doesn't exist, instead of an error message, we just get a blank. Check out the how-to videos on animations for examples of how to do both black and white and color animations. You'll be surprised at what you can do with these little panels. Here are a couple previews. Here's an example of the classic Muybridge experiment where we set up cameras to see if a horse's legs ever left the ground. Again, I'm doing the same thing here. I'm just incrementing F1. When it gets to the end of the sequence, hitting F2. If the PLC were to do this in real time, it would look like a continuous animation. Here's the exact same thing done on a black and white panel. Reset, go back to zero. And here's a cute example of the Automation Direct Smiley Guy getting on his motorcycle. All of these examples are covered in the How to Animate videos. Check them out when you have some time to kill, but a word of caution, animations can take a lot of your time and use a lot of resources, so please be careful with that. Well, that's more than enough for this video. Please be sure to check out all the other videos in this series. And as always, please send us any topics you would like to see covered, or any other comments for that matter. We appreciate the feedback.